Welcome back, everybody. Today in Lecture 18, we're going to be learning about related rates. This is an application of implicit differentiation, which was covered in Lecture 16. So up until now, we've been differentiating with just one variable in mind. But in the real world, situations are much more complicated than that. And with the passage of time, many different variables are changing all at once, just depending on the situation and what the relationship is between all of those um, entities. So we're going to be looking at um, examples where we consider many different variables changing at once. And uh, with this section, it's a lot of word problems. But I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step process to kind of attack these problems, especially when you encounter a new one, um, a ways to systematically approach finding all the information you need in solving the problem. With this topic, practice makes perfect. So you just want to have seen a lot of different examples. Um, and then you're going to start to get very good at these and recognize the patterns for these kind of problems. So I'm going to go over a couple examples with you today. And then after this video, you should go practice um, using your homework and using the classwork as well. OK, so here's my first example. It says, Avi leans a 10-foot ladder against a wall. The base of the ladder begins to slide away from the wall at a rate of 1 fourth feet per second. When the base of the ladder is 8 feet from the wall, how fast is the ladder sliding down the wall? OK, so there's a lot of information. I have already started by underlining kind of the key pieces of information that I need to keep in mind. Um, also, the fact that the ladder is 10 feet, that might come into play. So I'll underline that as well. The very beginning of these problems, I suggest, I strongly suggest, especially if it's a new situation that you haven't seen in a problem before, is you should draw a picture or some kind of diagram. So draw a picture. It'll really help you keep track of what's going on, and it doesn't take that long. So let's go ahead and draw a picture of the scenario. I'm going to draw my wall just like this, and I'm going to draw a ladder leaning against a wall. So here's my ladder. And I'm going to assume that this is a 90 degree angle right here. So once I do that, I'm going to start labeling everything I know. So I know that the ladder is 10 feet. So I'll label that side C, because I see that this is going to be a right triangle. I know at this instance in time, the base of the ladder right here is 8 feet from the wall. So if I call this side B, I'll label that 8 feet. We haven't got this side yet. We will get it soon. We want to know how fast is the ladder sliding down the wall. So we need to figure out how fast the ladder slides down the wall. Because right now, the movement is this way. Um, so this side is changing. And it's changing at a rate of 1 fourth feet per second. So the way we represent that using um, symbols is we're going to write db dt. So this stands for the rate of change in side B. So dB dt. Anytime you see d variable dt, that's the rate of change of that particular variable. And I can go one step further here, and I know dB dt is a positive 1 fourth feet per second. So not only do you have to consider the magnitude of the number, but you need to consider what sign it is. If you think about the situation that's going on, which is why we're drawing the picture, it'll help you see that if we're sliding away from the wall, is this side shrinking or growing? In fact, the side is growing as the ladder slides out this way. So this needs to be a positive number. Now, if you think about the ladder sliding down the wall, this side is going to be shrinking. And we don't actually know dADt right now. We can figure out what a is, though, at this specific instance in time. So let's move to step two, which is write your relevant formulas. And there's really just one that's important this time. You can probably guess what it is. It's a squared plus b squared equals c squared, so the Pythagorean theorem. For 3 here, we're going to write the given information. 
it's good to keep tabs of everything you do know so far and label it with the correct labeling. So not only do I have A, B, and C in this scenario, all three sides of the triangle, I also have DADT, DBDT, and DCDT, because all of these could be changing with respect to time. So I'd want to keep tabs on everything that's going on. So what I'm going to do is say, well, I don't know what DADT is. That's the rate of change of this side over time. Notice this is what the question wants. It wants to know how fast is the ladder sliding down the wall. So we want to know how fast the ladder sliding down. We want DADT. That's our goal. DPDT was given to us. This is one fourth feet per second. B is given to us as 8, C is given to us as 10. To find A, we'll use the Pythagorean theorem. So if I go over here, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A squared plus 8 squared is 10 squared, which is 100. I just kind of wrote 100. If you solve this, you'll say that, see that A is 6. So I'll put that in my picture here. DCDT represents how fast side C is changing over time. It's this ladder, right? So as it's sliding down the wall, does the length of the ladder ever change? Should it be changing if it's just a ladder, say a wooden ladder, it's fixed? Will the length of the ladder ever change as it's sliding down the wall? The answer is no. It's not going to get warped as it's sliding down the wall. It will be 10 feet when it's here and 10 feet when it's on the ground. So we say DCDT in this situation is zero. The length of this side never changes. Um, this is another reason why it's very important to draw a picture, because some of the, the things you think might be variable are actually not changing at all with respect to time. And this is one of them. OK. Now that I've got tabs on all the information, step four is going to be differentiate, differentiate two with respect to t, the time variable. So you're going to use implicit differentiation to do this, so lecture 16 stuff. To dictate the derivative of this with respect to t, I do 2a and then dA dt plus 2b db dt equals derivative of c squared is 2c dc dt. And if you want to make your work even easier here, you'll notice I have a factor of 2 everywhere that's going to just cross out. So that's always going to happen when you're doing a, a related rates problem with this particular formula. All right, let's plug in everything we do know. So let's go up here now. So up here, 5, my, usually my final step is to plug everything in. So you don't want to do this too early. Because if you had plugged in your constants early and taken derivatives, you would have got 0 everywhere. So you need to leave the variable parts alone until the very end, and then you can plug in. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in my a, which I found to be 6 using the Pythagorean theorem, using the relationship between a, b, and c. So I get 6. I don't know what d, a, d, t is, but I will know in a few minutes here. b is 8 db dt is given to me as 1 fourth. I'll kind of drop my units now. And then equals c is 10. However, that doesn't matter because dc dt is 0. The, the length of the ladder is not changing over time. If we continue to solve this, this is 6 da dt plus, and I'm going to get 2 equals 0. If I subtract 2 and divide by 6, I get dA dt equals negative 2 over 6, which is negative 1 third feet per second. So again, be very careful about the sign of the answer here and the sign of these rates of change, because we need to go back and um, read the English here. It says, how fast is the ladder sliding down the wall? So the English here has already accounted for the fact that we know the ladder is going to be sliding down the wall. So how fast does it slide down the wall? Or how fast does it move in the negative direction? The ladder slides 
down the wall at one third feet per second. So because I've already specified that it's down, I don't need to put a negative sign in front of here, even though the situation here accounted for the fact that it's negative, that it's sliding down the wall. But don't get tripped up on your double negatives is all I'm saying. So how fast are we going down the wall? That's a positive one third. Um, OK, so um, hopefully that made sense. This is my solution here. Let's look at this next example. Um, so this says, a hot air balloon rising vertically from the ground is observed by Cayley 500 feet away. At the moment Cayley's line of sight creates an angle of theta equal to pi over 4 with the ground, the angle is increasing at a rate of 0 0.20 radians per minute. And how fast is the balloon rising? So what I just realized here is that Cayley is watching the balloon, but I have no one who's actually manning the balloon here. So we're going to say Colby rides in a hot air balloon. We need someone to drive the balloon, right? Otherwise, it's just going to go up forever. OK, so that's important, right? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> OK, we're going to draw a situation based on this. So remember, step one, picture. If that sounds a childish diagram, whatever, diagram. Let's figure out what's going on. So you have Kaylee standing here, OK? 500 feet away, so some safe distance away, there's this balloon that is rising. Maybe I'll even give it an arrow, because it's, it's continuously rising. And it's vertically, so I know that this is going to be straight up and down. I'll give myself the, the right angle here. So Kaylee's over here. He's observing the balloon just like this. And I don't know, here's the balloon. <laughs> <laughs> OK. And Colby's up here. So this is my diagram. Uh, maybe I can label a couple other things. Let me look at the problem. So I've got the fact that it's 400 feet away. What else have I not used? I, at this particular moment in time, the angle theta here is pi over 4, or 45 degrees. So I probably want to label that. And then I also know the angle is increasing at a rate of 0.20. So this angle right here is only going to keep growing as Kaylee has to keep looking up, 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 and follow it into the sky, because he's fixed in this position. So let me go to step two here. I'm going to write my relevant equation now. So we have a right triangle, but this time we're talking about the rate of change of the angle. Um, I'm not really concerned with the sides here. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a trig function. I'm going to say, what trig function relates to these two sides? And that would be tangent of theta is going to be h over 500. So that's going to be my starting equation. For step three, let's write down my given stuff. So this was step two. It was writing down the irrelevant equations. But I think this is the only one I'm going to need. I'm given that this distance right here, this you could think of this as like, this is my opposite. This is my adjacent. So we'll just call this side A. I'm given that A is 500. What else am I given? Well, I'm given that H um, is changing. That's about it. I don't know exactly how high this is. I know theta is going to be pi over 4 at this moment in time. I also don't know d theta dt. I have no idea what, oh wait, I do know what that is. I'm sorry. It says the angle is increasing at a rate of 0.20. So the angle with respect to time is increasing at a rate of 0.20 radians per minute. So what do I actually not know here? What is it asking for? It says, how fast is the balloon rising? So it's asking, how fast is this side changing as we're going up? So what we also don't know, we don't know what dh dt. This is the goal. We're going to need to figure out what dh dt is, because that's how fast this side is changing with respect to time, or how fast the balloon is rising. OK, so I think I've accounted for everything that I know. 
In step four, I'm going to go ahead and differentiate two. So what I'm going to do is going to take the derivative of the left side with respect to time. So the derivative of tangent um, is secant squared theta times, this is derivative with respect to t. So this is d theta dt equals, what's the derivative of this? Well, this right here, don't use quotient rule. <laughs> this right here is 1 over 500 times h. So the 1 over 500 is a constant. Ignore it. Derivative of h with respect to t is 1 dh dt. That's what I'm looking for, right? OK. So step five is we're going to plug in everything. So we're going to plug in to solve. OK. So I need to plug in my theta here. So I get secant squared of pi over 4. That's the angle I have right now. d theta dt is 0 0.20. And then I have 1 over 500 dh dt. Let's do some scratch work to figure out what secant squared pi over 4 is. So let's go over here and do some scratch work. So secant squared pi over 4. That's the same thing as 1 over cosine squared of pi over 4. OK. Cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, and I'm going to square it. So this lets me know that this is 1 over 2 over 4, and that's just 2. So I did some scratch work, and I figured out that this is equal to just 2. So I get 2 times 0 0.20. I'll multiply the 500 to the left as well, and I'll get 500 equals dh dt. And then finally, I can simplify this. So 0.2 is like multiplying by a fifth. So this is 100 times 2 is 200. And let me take a look at the units here. We have feet per minute. Those are the units here, feet per minute. So that's how fast the balloon is rising. That's dh dt. It's how fast the height is changing with respect to time. One thing I just recalled here is as you're doing these problems, be sure that all the units match. Because if I was given feet and then later I was given miles, plugging things into the same formula would not make sense because units wouldn't cancel. So if you ever have a situation where you have two um, different units, you're going to need to change one of them into the other one. So have them all match first, and then you can go ahead and do the process. So they were all matching. I had feet um, here, and I had minutes and minutes. So I was just making sure everything was the same unit. OK. I'm going to go ahead and um, erase this, and I'll be back with just a couple more examples. See you soon. All right, so we'll look at these two examples now. Um, the first one says, David deposits sand from a conveyor belt at a rate of 40 feet cubed per minute. And this forms a conical pile with base diameter twice its height. How fast is the height of the pile increasing when it is 10 feet high? Or instead of it is, you can say when the pile is 10 feet high. All right, same general process as before. The objects might be different. But I'm going to approach this the same way. So step one, picture. So conical pile means I'm going to draw a cone. The base diameter is twice the height. So let's do something like this. I'm going to have this as my base. And then here is the sand pile, and it forms a cone. So down here, this is going to be the base diameter. And then this will be the height. And um, I have a couple pieces of information, but not too much. This is really the only numerical thing I know, um, that I have this volume, this rate of change in the volume. So whenever you see something cubed, you can think of that as like a volume. So right now, since there's not a lot going on, I'm going to just go ahead and write my relevant equation. So if I'm talking about the volume, I'm going to write down the volume formula for a cone. So this is going to be v equals pi over 3 r squared times h. So this is my relevant formula this time. So here's my formula. 
However, there's a couple more things I want to keep track of. So in addition to this, I noticed that the diameter, the base diameter, is two times the height. And I'm going to switch colors here because I'm not liking how this blue is writing. What else does this mean? Well, diameter is the same thing as two times the radius. Remember, the radius is just half the diameter. So I can replace this with 2r equals 2h. But what that tells me is that r is actually equal to h. Notice this is much more useful because in my formula here, I have h's and r's. I don't have um, the, the variable d. So what I could do is I could take this and substitute it into here. So what I know now is that the volume is equal to pi over 3. I'm interested in how the height is changing. So I'm going to make sure my equation has all h's in it. So instead of r squared, I'll plug in h. And I'll get h squared times h. But then this just means the volume formula is going to be v equals pi over 3 h cubed in this instance, OK? So in, in 2, there might not just be one formula you're dealing with. If you see other relationships happening, write them all down and see if you can use those um, supporting relationships to simplify the main equation even further. So I've got it now in terms of just h. Now I'm going to move on to step 3 because I feel pretty satisfied with that. Um, this is going to be write the given information. Um, and also, you know, write what you're looking for as well. So the one thing I do now is that the volume with respect to time, dv dt, it's changing at a rate of a positive 40 feet cubed per minute. They have given me that. What I'm looking for right now is dh dt. I don't know how fast the pile height is increasing. So that, that represented in symbols is dh dt. But I do know that h is equal to 10. That was the other piece of information I had. So at this moment, it's 10. Let's go to step 4. So I'm going to differentiate. And I'm going to differentiate the easier equation I made back in step 2. So I'm going to differentiate v equals pi over 3 h cubed with respect to time. So if I differentiate the left side, that's dv dt. Differentiate the right side. Pi over 3 is just a constant. Ignore it. Here I'm going to bring the 3 in front. I get pi over 3. 3h three squared. But with respect to t, that's going to be another dh dt, thanks to the implicit differentiation. What is this simplified to? Well, the 3's cancel. And I get pi h squared dh dt. And now step 5, I'm going to plug in my info. So let's do that. For dv dt, I know that's equal to 40. So let's plug that in. 40 equals. For pi, I'm going to leave that alone. For h, I know it's 10 right now. and I'm going to square that. And what I'm missing is dh dt. And that's the only thing I need to solve for here. So I'm going to divide through. This is, first I'll say this is 40, 100 pi dh dt. And then finally, I'll divide both sides by 100 pi. And I'll get 4 over 10 pi um, is dh dt. So the pile is increasing. The height of it is going to be 4 over 10 pi. And my units were feet per minute. So that's dh dt. Uh, be careful. Make sure you make, make sure the pi gets to the denominator and isn't up here. For some reason, that's a common mistake. So make sure when you divide through by the whole thing, pi also lands in the denominator as well. So this is 4 over 10 pi. OK. So same kind of approach as last time. We just had a different object and a different formula to deal with. Let's look at this last example I have for you. So this says, Chris and Akanch depart from the intersection at 13th and University Ave. Um, they leave at the same time. Chris travels north at 30 feet per second. So that's a rate I'm seeing. Um, also, Ekanj travels east at 26 feet per second. So that's another rate I'm seeing. So two things are changing with respect to time. 
After 10 seconds, that seems pretty important too, how fast is the distance between them changing? OK, so let's say for my picture, I draw the intersection of 13th and University. So it's like this. And I'm just going to draw that piece. This is due north, and this is going to be due east. So both of them are right here. They've got their scooters, um, and they're both going to leave at the same time. So I know if I call this side maybe A, this side is changing. So we'll say Chris is going north. So this will be um, Chris traveling north at 30 feet per second. OK? And I don't know the side length right now. And then down here, it's going to be this side, um, B, which I also don't know right now. But I do know that this side is changing at 26 feet per second. And that's changing in this direction. So both sides are getting larger over, over time. So what I'll draw here represents where they are after 10 seconds, so here and here. And this is the distance. This is their distance. Um, I'm going to call that c. I was tempting to use d for the variable, but the equation I have in mind, and hopefully you have the same one in mind right now, it involves a c. <laughs> so I'm going to use c. OK, so here's my picture. There's some other pieces of information I haven't used though, though um, yet. So my time is 10 seconds have passed. So after 10 seconds, um, if this side is changing 30 feet every second, that means after 10 seconds, this has gone 300. You're just going to multiply 10, the number of seconds, by 30. So this side length is 300 feet after 10 seconds, because we went 31 second, 60 in 2 seconds, and we are at 300 now. This side's not quite as big because the contra wasn't traveling as fast. But if I take the 26 and multiply by 10, this side is 260 feet. So notice I have both pieces of information here and here. I know both sides are growing, so all of these need to be positive. Is this side increasing as well? Yes. So unlike the latter example, these two are going to keep moving this way. And this side is just going to keep growing. So dc dt this time is what we're looking for. And I know what c is. Using the Pythagorean theorem, it's 300 squared plus 260 squared under a square root. All right, so this is a good picture. I've also labeled a lot of stuff. Let's write down the formula. The one formula I have in mind for this one kind of ties back to our first example. It's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If I take the derivative, remember it's, it's 2a dA dt plus 2b dB dt equals 2c dC dt. And remember, those twos are irrelevant. So honestly, I should just make this the last time I include this step, because you should know that one by now. So all of these twos cancel out. And I could start filling in all my information now. I have I have five different things. So I've already kind of written my givens down, but let's list them. A is 300. B is 260. C is this square root right here, 300 squared plus 260 squared. D A D T is 30 feet per second. D B D T is 26 feet per second. And then dc dt, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking at how fast the distance between them increases. So that's dc dt in, in symbols, or that, that's that in symbols right here. All right. Um, four, I've already, I've already differentiated the formula. So this was four. <laughs> I've kind of jumped around because I'm getting very comfortable now with the process. So for five, I'm going to plug in and solve. And again, as another warning, this is always the last thing you should be doing. Um, after you've uh, found the equation, differentiated, then you can plug in and solve once you have all your information together. So for A, I'm going to plug in 300. DADT is 30 
plus for B right here, I have 260. DBDT was also given as 26 equals C, which is the square root of 300 squared plus 260 squared times DCDT, which is what we're missing. Okay? If you add these together, I, I did the math um, previously here. So this top part is going to be 15,760. I'm going to divide over this number right here. So this is the square root of 300 squared plus 260 squared is DCDT. So on a quiz or on a, an exam, this is what you'd ex be expected to probably get to right here. You wouldn't be able to calculate that by hand. But I used a calculator, and just to let you know, this is 39.6989 feet per second, um, roughly. So this is how fast their overall distance is changing over time. Notice that it is something slightly larger than their individual speeds. Um, so working together, it's not going to be a perfect 30, what was it, 30 plus 26 is 56. That's not the, the rate of change here because that would be if they are, they're perfectly opposite of one another. But working this way, it's still going to be greater than both of these. Um, and it turns out to be 39.6989 um, for the change in the distance. OK, so over the, in this video, we covered four examples. Um, I use the same kind of solving process for all these examples. You can use this method to attack other problems, even ones that don't seem familiar. And like I said, this topic, you just need to see enough examples so you get comfortable with all of them. Um, and then I really think you'll start to improve in this area. Okay. Um, until next time, I'll see you in lecture 19. Have a good day. Bye.